Mike Brown, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. How has uh, Finland been treating you so far? Uh, so far, things have been going great. Finland is uh, an ex excellent place to visit, excellent place to be uh, from my perspective. Uh, everybody's been really nice, uh, helpful. Every, I, I can't say anything, you know, any nicer about it. Okay. How do you see American culture here in Finland? Fast food chains to the automobiles, the electronics, um, just the influence of the, the Western civilization in the, in the States coming out this way. Um, is growing, you know, not only just from that standpoint, but also from um, the clothing, the the atmosphere. Like it, it's very coming from the states to to Finland, um, and in Europe in general, you you have more of a feeling of uh, things that you're accustomed to in the states here. You play the quarterback for Helsinki Roosters as a pro athlete uh, in Finland. Uh, how did you end up here to play American football? Well, I've played pro since 2008. I've played in Canada, played in Germany, played in Switzerland, played in France and Italy, played on the U.S. national team. Uh, most recently I played in Poland and I got the call to come to Finland and it's been a great move. Uh, the Helsinki Roosters is a very known organization throughout Europe and American football. More than very known, they're one of the top organizations in American football throughout Europe. Um, so for me to be here and be invited here is, is a great, great thing for me. Yeah, vaikka Roosters on tunnettu Euroopassa, niin amerikkalainen jalkapallo on Suomessa vielä aika tuntematon laji. Toimittajamme kävi tutustumassa ja ottamassa selvää, kuinka paljon amerikkalaisia lajeja seurataan Suomessa. Seuraatko mitään amerikkalaista lajia, kuten koripalloa tai amerikkalaista jalkapalloa? Enpä juurikaan. Tällä hetkellä en seuraa. No, no really. No eipä juuri tule niitä. No. Koripalloa muun muassa. Basketball, yes, I like it. Kyllä, koripalloa tulee seurata. Basketball. Baseball and basketball are pretty up there. They're pretty popular in Australia. Miksi ette seuraa mitään amerikkalaista? No ei, ne vaan tunnu omaksi ne, ne lajit. Ei oikeastaan näytä suomalaiset kanavat sellaista, niin kuin sellaisia aikoja, että tulisi seurattua. I don't like it. <laughs> no jenki putiksesta ehkä. Se pelataan vaan siellä eikä täällä niinkään suosittu laji ollut oikeastaan koskaan. Mutta on koripallo saanut pikkuhiljaa jo kannuksia, kun on vähän menestystä tullut. Ei seurata, ei täällä niin näy missään televisiossa, NBA tai NFL. Because American sports is not popular in Russia. I know the baseball, American football, but it's not popular in Russia. Well, I just know the Yankees, but I don't understand the game, so I don't like it that much. Maybe it's because I don't understand it. American football is still falling behind a bit in Australia, but it's starting to pick up within your university sport and that sort of stuff. I like all. Uh, being a pro in an American sport uh, is very rare in Finland. Um, how are you uh, maintaining your lifestyle financially here while playing? Well, being here, uh, I don't have any expenses. So as far as rent, um, phone, internet, transportation pass, anything like any things that I guess normal people would have to pay, I don't have to worry about. So I, I can just maintain off my salary. I uh, put into our RSVP so that way when I do get to the age where I need to retire and stop playing and you know kind of just settle down and just enjoy life um, I have you know some finances set away for that um, just basically dealing with my money my wife actually handles a lot of that you know she's really good with money um, so we, we do pretty well we do pretty well uh, not having any expenses again is, is a huge huge benefit for us yeah, to become a pro in any sport is hard. Did you have a backup plan? Yeah, actually I did. Um, recently I had an opportunity to work in Canada in the oil and gas industry. Um, and it was going to be making a very nice salary, um, benefits and everything included. And uh, as everybody knows, the, the crude, the oil is down. Um, and my I'm hired, but my active date was pushed back the year. And during... Uh, my wife and I's pillow talk. We we talked about the opportunity of going there, and did we really want to do that and go into a nine to five and working, you know, just you know, just having a traditional life. And we kind of just looked at each other and was like, Nah, hell no, nah, that's not us. You know what I mean? We we want to do what we want to do. We want to have time leveraging. We want to have flexibility. We want to be able to spend time with each other. We want to be able to work out with each other. We want to be able to travel and do all those kind of things. And you know, it, it's a lot more difficult. It's not that it's impossible, but it's a lot more difficult to do it when you have a nine to five and you have a schedule and you have to 
ask for permission off to take a vacation and you have to do those kind of things. So we said, you know what, this is, we're going to be Euro lifers, you know. Uh, käydään katsomassa Maikin päivästä uh, ammattiurheilijana pieni video tähän väliin. So I just write what I'm grateful for, like uh, my experiences. I don't mean it's anything from little things, just like waking up in the morning and being able to wake up to my wife. I do a lot of uh, like self-teaching, self-educating, and um, personal growth. I guess I'm like a, a vegetarian. I'm like a fake vegetarian in a sense. Um, for the most part, I don't eat meat, but eggs to me don't count as a meat. Um, you know, I get like some tortilla wraps. Um, I put hummus on as extra protein. What? All right, let's go troops. You know, we did a pretty uh, intense workout. And right now we all feel like we need some damn cars. So we're gonna go to this Thai place right right, uh, right next door. $10, 10 euro all you can eat buffet. It's good food and you can't beat it, so. And this is the time now where we have kind of like our free time. Um, you get some guys that play a video game, some will take a nap. Um, or we'll stay up and chat with each other or we'll go out in the city and then we have uh, some field work at six o'clock with the receivers um, which is about an hour session six to seven so it's uh, 5:45. Um, we have our training at six o'clock here at the velodrome on the field today we're gonna do some skill some position specific drills um, with the receivers work on um, some fundamentals some techniques um, and also some um, spacing in the routes that we route combinations that we want to run um, down the goal line and um, should help us out a lot. Normally we try to eat within 30 to 45 minutes of training whether it's uh, weightlifting or running or even practice. As, a, as an athlete and a high performance athlete you always have to have uh, your metabolism going. You, you always got to feed that monster. Always eating, constantly eating, just, just always something in your mouth. On the way to practice in the water it's just a a magical drink, Mike's special drink. Now I'm about to just cuddle with my wife. We're gonna have some pillow talk and turn over and start tomorrow, you know, in a couple hours. So we do this thing where we say eyes, eyes. So, Micah, seems your day is very scheduled. Um, is your every day the same? It is routine in the sense of, you know, waking up, uh, writing in a journal, eating, those kind of things. But day to day it changes, you know, depending on if we have practice, um, our weightlifting schedule changes. Um, some days we go on the field and do extra work, uh, like sprinting or, or agility. Other days we don't. Um, game days are completely different than, you know, the normal practice days. Uh, we have active recovery days. So uh, in a sense, no, we don't have the same routine or the same schedule. Um, you know, it's it's completely different every day, day to day, depending on what we have to do and what we have to prepare for. You know, is it a long week or is it a short week? Meaning, you know, do we play on a Monday and then come back and play on a Saturday? Or do we play on a Saturday and we don't come back and play till next Monday? You know, which would be a long week for us. Yeah. So it, it, it varies depending on what we have. Um, it's not the same at all. It's not, you know, getting up at eight o'clock, going to work, coming back at five o'clock and doing whatever, you know, it's, everything is different. The, the whole, it's complete lifestyle change, you know, it's, your day is consumed by what you do as far as being a professional athlete. There's not a, a time, you know, again, eight to, eight to five or nine to five or whatever. It's 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 or 66 days in the leap year, it, every day, all day. Yeah, in the same team, uh, there are amateur players and professionals like you. Uh, how do you feel it impacts the team? Well, it, it's very different. 
Uh, for me, it's my job. For other guys, it's a hobby. We have some guys on the team that are doctors. We have lawyers. We have kindergarten teachers. Uh, you know, you have students. You know, you have a wider range of people and what they do um, throughout their, you know, day-to-day -day activities outside of football. Um, for me, football is my job. This is what I do. Um, so me going to the gym, me eating the way I do, uh, me preparing myself the way I have been um, is my job. You know, I don't have, a, again, a time frame and a time slot. But for other guys, it's, it's a hobby, you know, and you get guys that are really committed. And sometimes you get some guys that aren't as committed, um, but you also have to understand what they have to go through. You know, they have families at home, they have to take care of their kids or their schoolwork or going to work and, you know, their hours and sometimes they can't get time off, you know, and that's, again, that time leveraging and flexibility. You know, they can't just leave whenever they want to to be to practice. And um, as an organization, as a team, and as a player, we have to kind of understand that. You know, I, I can't expect everybody to be at practice early throughout the entire practice. And, you know, they have different things that they have to do. But here, I really like that guys do try and they do communicate. If they can't make it, they let you know because accountability is a big thing in American football. You got to be able to count on the guy next to you and or the girl next to you um, and and to know that a person is going to be there or they're not going to be there is also good because now you can prepare for that for that practice or that game or whatever you, event you have at that time. As a professional athlete um, of course maintaining your health and 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 your instrument which is your your body um, you need to build an image, uh, a brand of yourself. How do you do that and how do you maintain your brand? Well, the internet is the biggest tool that any of us have, uh, whether you're a professional athlete or not. But being a professional athlete, as you said, building your brand um, through the internet, social media, those kind of things, uh, you know, portraying your, your image, you know, who you are, not only as an athlete, but behind the scenes. People don't want to just see what you do on the field or on the court or on the pitch, they want to see what you do behind, you know, how do you look like a professional athlete? How do you, how does a professional athlete act? How do they dress? What do they do throughout their day-to-day -day activities? Um, so using the internet and social media is also a big thing. You know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, the importance of hashtags, you know, having multiple platforms and multiple ways to uh, connect with people um, is huge, you know. So when you hashtag and somebody searches a particular hashtag, you know, it broadens you know, the availability of you being plugged into to what they're looking for. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at The Real Mike Brown.